Hi, I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and welcome back to the Hive. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at this brilliant smart power board. We'll take a look at the build quality, how it looks inside the Tuya app, and we'll also take a look at the Tuya integration into Home Assistant for this unit. In the lead up to the holidays, everyone is starting to put up their Christmas lights. So it feels like now is a great time to start talking about options for controlling those Christmas lights. Last week, I showed you the TP-Link KP303 Smart Power Board, and I'm planning to do a head-to-head -head comparison for the power boards that I've got here. So while I roll the intro, take a moment to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release that video and other videos each week. And let's get started. So after last week's TP-Link episode, I popped into Officeworks and grabbed this brilliant smart power board for $54.95 so that I could review it and do a comparison to the others that I have here. I also have the TP-Link Casa Smart one that I showed you last week. Uh, and one of my first videos, or one of my earliest product review videos was of the Arlec Grid Connect five outlet power board with four individually switched ports. Uh, and I have another Arlec Grid Connect to review and we'll be doing that one next week. And then we will do the side-by-side -side comparison of the power boards that I have. Now, if we switch over to the other camera and take a look at the box, right on the front, we see that this is a four outlet board and it has four USB ports. We also see right here that it is Wi-Fi with no hub required and it works with the Google Assistant, Alexa and IFTTT or IFT. Now looking around the sides of the box, there's not really anything else that's worth mentioning. Uh, it doesn't have any rating information at all. Uh, it just seems to be um, marketing copy, uh, though on one side it does show us the dimensions and it's 100 millimeters by 206 millimeters. So we'll open up the box and take a look at the unit. Now inside the box, we've got a quick start guide uh, and the unit itself. Uh, there's some plastic around it and We'll pop that out of the box. Now the build quality feels okay, but the plastic does feel a little bit on the cheap side. One thing I will say though, is that the pigtail lead feels like it's very high quality and it's quite chunky. I do notice that there's only the one button on this unit, meaning that for physical controls, we've got an all or nothing proposition here, which I'm not super keen on. Uh, and uh, if we look around the unit, we've got some warnings here that the total load can't exceed 2.4 kilowatts and that it's for indoor use only. Uh, and on the bottom, we've got details of the model uh, that we've got the four USB ports. Uh, the rating is 240 volts at 50 Hertz for 10 amps or 2.4 kilowatts. And our USB output rating here is five volts at 2100 milliamps total. Uh, and we'll come back to that in a second. Uh, and our Wi Fi frequency needs to be 2.4 gigahertz. Now, with the USB output only being 2.1 amps, uh, that means that if you were to plug in four USB charging items, you're only going to get about 500 milliamps per port. So you can only really fast charge one device at a time and you might even struggle with a larger device like an iPad and some of the newer iPads can draw uh, that 2.1 amps uh, just by themselves. There's not really anything else to comment on around the unit itself except for the uh, thermal cutoff button here uh, which most power boards have. The cable is a good length probably around one and a half meters I would say um, that would be about four or five feet for uh, anyone who's using freedom units. Uh, and we can see that it's a straight through plug. It's not a right angle plug. 
I'm going to uh, plug the unit into power and we will take a look at setting it up into the two-year app. Now, before shooting this video, I did look up this unit in the Black Adder Tasmoda repository. I did find that there is a template for it, but but there is a warning on the site that the manufacturers started using unsupported non-ESP8266 chips recently and this device might not be compatible anymore and to check the seller descriptions or contact them before buying this unit. I'm not going to be flashing this unit so we're just going to use Tuya and the new Tuya integration into Home Assistant which I did a video on a few weeks back. Okay, so to pair the device, I've got the Tuya app open here. I'm gonna tap the plus button. I'm gonna tap power strip Wi-Fi. Uh, I'm selecting my Wi-Fi network here, which is already showing up. I'm gonna tap next. Uh, and it's telling me to power on the device after it's been powered off for 10 seconds. So I've just unplugged it a moment ago uh, and I'm going to plug it in. And I'm going to press and hold the reset button until the indicator blinks. Okay, and that started blinking now, and it's blinking three times per second, so I'm going to tap confirm and tap next, and we should now start. Okay, so uh, we've got device added successfully, and we've got smart power strip. I'm going to edit the name here. Uh, I'm going to call this... going to call it brilliant power strip uh, and I'll tap save there and for the moment it is in the dining room so we will tap done okay so now that it's paired let's take a look around inside the Tuya app itself and straight away we can see that we've got the uh, USB we've got switch one two three and four and we've got buttons that say all on or all off. Now I've plugged in uh, a couple of uh, just dumb LED light bulbs here um, into the power strip. I've got them in, I believe it's port three and four, uh, but there's no labeling on the unit to tell. So I'm going to turn on three and yes, that's switch three and four and that's correct and two and one okay so it is a left to right thing that makes sense and we can also turn off the usb chargers um, and that didn't make a clonking relay sound so that's interesting that there's no relay switching that 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 just seems to be something solid state that's switching that there so what we can now do here uh, is obviously turn stuff on and off if we need to uh, but we can tap next to each thing and just change the name so uh, i'm just going to call this brilliant one brilliant usb so i'll hit save on that now obviously next to each of these we can see that we've got an alarm clock and we can tap there and add timers here um, so we can add a schedule to uh, start at a particular time either turn on or turn off uh, at a particular time here and we can either repeat on specific days or repeat just once um, we can add a note uh, we can push a notification to our mobile device uh, and choose whether the switch is coming on or off. I'm not going to add a timer there uh, and we've got the manual control. And so by tapping the uh, edit icon in the top right we can see the details for the whole unit. We've got the device information such as the IP address, the time zone etc. Um, that IP address is my external IP address so I'm going to have to blur that out. Uh, and we've got some information about tap to run automations which we've not created here you would have seen those in the two year deep dive video i did a few weeks back uh, we've got offline notifications here as well so we can turn that on and we'll get an alert if the unit go goes offline for more than 30 minutes and we've got the third party control so we can enable uh, the amazon the google or the ifttt control there we can share the device to other users if we wanted to. Uh, we can create a group 
of devices. So with other devices, we can put this all into a single group to turn them on and off all at the same time. FAQs and feedback, add to home screen, which just adds it to the home screen of the phone so that we can quickly access the controls for this. Uh, check the device network and device update. Um, it's showing me that there's no updates available. We can turn on automatic updates if we wanted to, or we can remove the device. Uh, we've got device review here as well, um, so we can give a uh, star rating and uh, provide details back to the manufacturer via Tuya. So over in Home Assistant, I'm going to head to Configuration and then Integrations. And I'm going to find my Tuya integration here and I'm going to click on the three dot stack and click reload. And I should get an alert that the integration was reloaded. I'll hit OK. Um, now I do, do notice that this didn't change and I suspect that the reason that this didn't change is because it already had the brilliant power strip in there, which it appears that it did. So I can click on that brilliant power strip and we see that we've got the different sockets here uh, and we can control socket one, two, three, and four, and the USB sockets as well. Now, interestingly, these sockets are not getting appropriate feedback from the Tuya app, it seems. Uh, I'm not sure what that's about, uh, but let's um, turn some of these off. Yeah, very strange behavior here that the Tuya app is showing uh, not what the actual power strip is doing. Um, so I'm not sure what that's about. Let's head back to our overview and we will scroll through and I'm going to find the switch section here and we can see brilliant power strip socket one, two, three, four, and USB. I'm going to make sure that those are off. And so they're off on the unit here, uh, but for a moment there, they were showing us on in the app. So very strange. I'm gonna test the latency now. Um, so I've got a light plugged into socket three. So let's test that now, see how many frames it takes from the time that I click the button to the time that we see the light um, show up on the corner here. We should be able to see that pretty well. So three, two, one. So we can see that the light is on. Um, you can see the extra light here, but the Home Assistant UI isn't showing that detail. And in fact, it's showing that socket two is on, um, but it's actually not on in the power board itself. So there's something not quite right there, um, but it's also showing that socket three is off um, when it is in fact on. So there's something very strange going on um, with the integration here. I'm not sure if it's the unit itself or if it's um, something weird with the uh, Home Assistant integration uh, just today. So, so as always, because this is a two-year integration, there is the latency between when we turn the switch on and when the action takes place. Um, and we saw that that was maybe around about half a second. So there is a perceived delay between hitting the switch and the action actually occurring. So that is the Brilliant Smart Wi-Fi 4 outlet power board with four USB chargers. The pros of this unit, having the four USB outlets does make this power strip extremely versatile. And having the four individually switched mains outlets makes it even more versatile than the TP-Link, which only had the three switched mains outlets and only two USB outputs. It seems like it would be a great unit for a bedside table using the four USB ports to charge things like mobile phones and other USB gadgets, or you could use it on a desk. For the cons though, at $54.95, it's a bit pricey for what it is. The all or nothing physical button is a bit disappointing and it bizarrely also switches off the USB ports as well. Honestly, for $55, I would have expected individual buttons uh, and at the very least an individual button for the USB ports. 
Another concern I have with this unit is at this price point, I would have expected some mention on the box of any kind of surge protection, but I couldn't find anything in the literature at all. I would expect that for $55. There's also the detail on the Blackadder website that the manufacturer has started using non-ASP8266 control boards that are not going to run Tasmoda. I do know that Arlet Grid Connect have started doing that as well, and so I'm not super surprised by this, but while the two-year integration is a lot better than it used to be, the cloud API does still introduce that latency that we saw. And as I've mentioned a number of times with regards to cloud gadgets, relying on a stable internet connection does introduce the risk of losing control of your devices if the internet goes down or there's a problem with the server. And lastly, the power limit of the USB outputs at 2.1 amps is a bit of a shame. For something with four USB ports, I would have expected something with far more power output. All in all, it's a solid unit and it would absolutely suit most people's needs. If you were using this in an office or home environment, I believe that it would cover most use cases. That is all we have for this video and I do hope that it helped you in your smart home journey. Be sure to comment down below with your thoughts on the brilliant smart four port smart power board with four USB ports and any home automation ideas that you'd like to see me cover in future videos. Don't forget to also follow Hive Mind Automation on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. Those links are in the video description down below. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button to give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing now. It does help me out with the YouTube algorithm. While you're at it, hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos each week. And if you're looking for a VPN provider, I've placed an affiliate link for NordVPN in the video description down below. I've chosen to partner with NordVPN because they've got the best infrastructure of any of the VPN providers I've seen. They also have a strict no logs policy and servers all over the planet. On top of that, they've got apps for just about every platform around, including Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, and Android. So no matter what platform you're using, you can protect your personal information while you browse the web. So get a VPN today and use my link below to sign up for NordVPN. Lastly, if you enjoy what I'm doing here and you want to help to support the channel, there is a buy me a coffee link in the video description down below. Contributions through buy me a coffee are put towards making more and better content for you to enjoy. Thank you once again for watching. I'm Stu from Hivemind Automation and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.